Welcome to my new video format. This is called Coffee with Kevin. And I'm going to talk to you about a variety of topics from college football to finance to anything else of interest. And tonight I have my Angel Cup with me. So that's one of my favorite uh, drinking cups. It actually matches a picture that we have on the wall. And so you can see the, the angels here. Uh, looking at you. It's got a little chip in it, but other than that, it's a fine drinking cup. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the top 10. So go ahead, pull up a seat, grab your favorite cup of joe, and let's discuss some top 10 teams uh, from last weekend. The strong brew that we're going to be talking about, first of all, is Alabama, who defeated Tennessee 35-13. to That game, there was a single play that deflated Tennessee in that game. And so Tennessee lost that game 35-13, to but it could have been much closer. I'd like to compliment Bama on the defense because uh, that one play in question Bama defense held the Tennessee offense on first, second, third, and then on fourth and goal uh, when Tennessee went for the score over the top. The ball was knocked out, and, of course, Bama ran the ball all the way back. The complaint section for Bama is the Tua injury, the high ankle sprain, but uh, we'll see. They've still got uh, three weeks before they play um, Mike the Tiger. And at uh, Bat is it in Baton Rouge or Tuscaloosa? I think it's in Tuscaloosa. But anyway, Alabama should beware Mike the Tiger. So that's my tip for Bama. Now, as far as LSU, they defeated uh, Mississippi State 36 to 13. So Joe Burrow continues his Heisman performance, and with Tua out, that might be something uh, that gives him a chance to shine uh, this week when they play Auburn. So Burrow is, is the compliment. That's I'd like to compliment LSU on Burrow, and uh, my complaint would be for LSU would be their red zone offense because against Mississippi State, until about halfway through the second quarter, uh, all they could score were field goals. The tip that I would give uh, LSU is don't look past Auburn to Alabama because you've got to beat Auburn to stay up there at the top. Then Ohio State defeated Northwestern 52-3. to The offense just keeps dominating. And the compliment to Ohio State is that they're hanging huge numbers. The Complaint is that Ohio State still has to play Wisconsin, Penn State, Michigan, and the Big Ten title game. Um, so you better get out your ATV and watch for falling rocks because the rest of this schedule for Ohio State is going to be pretty tough. Clemson continues to, at number four, continues to uh, whip up on their ACC rivals. They beat Louisville 45-10. to so they beat up on a weak Louisville team this week, but their quarterback play would be mediocre at best. The compliment I have is that their running game was going really strong with almost 200 yards with their running back, Etienne. And the complaint is that uh, Trevor threw a couple of picks against the Louisville defense. And then what kind of tips could I give Clemson with that schedule? They, they really don't have anything to worry about. All right, let's move on to Oklahoma. OU defeated West Virginia 52-14. to Jalen is now going to challenge Burrow and possibly Tua because Jalen uh, had a five-touchdown performance. And so maybe we'll get a Jalen versus Tua uh, matchup. Anyone? Anyway, the Hurts and the offense was the complement for OU. And then the complaint I have, and I have this complaint every year with the Big 12, is they don't have a real title game. They just end up replaying uh, some other team. And the tip is beware the Bears, because the Bears are hiding in the closet and just waiting to face 
OU to see what they can do with you. Penn State defeated Michigan 28-21. to uh, Penn State's quarterback threw for three TDs and ran for one. But can Penn State white out Ohio State? That's the question. Obviously, their quarterback performance was great. But then on the other hand, it was Michigan and Harbaugh has a bad reputation with uh, these type of games. And also, Penn State needs to beware the uh, Minnesota trap. So watch out for Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's undefeated, and Penn State has to face them in a couple of weeks. So we'll see how that goes. Florida comes in at number seven. They defeated South Carolina 38-27. to uh, Muschamp's uh, players put up a, a good fight, but Trask threw for three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to thwart any upset. Uh, my pastor probably went nuts at that uh, fourth quarter showing. Uh, now, Trask, the quarterback for Florida, would be my compliment to Florida right now. But my uh, complaint about Florida was they did give up 27 points to uh, South Carolina. And my tip to Florida now is to make sure you win that cocktail party. You know, the one against Georgia. Okay, Notre Dame. Notre Dame was idle. So it was kind of a boring contest and I fell asleep. At least they didn't lose to idle. Notre Dame's biggest complaint is they have no title game at all. Not even anything like the Big 12. And Kirby Smart Kenobi is your only hope, Notre Dame. So you better hope Georgia wins out and plays well. Coming in at number 9 is Auburn. Auburn defeated the Razorbacks 51-10. to They're the latest bully to pick on Arkansas. It's a division win, so that's the good part. The bad part is it was Arkansas, so don't get too excited. And then the tip for uh, Auburn is, remember, Florida is your daddy. So you better hope they do well. Georgia comes in at number 10. They, uh, after scoring no points in the first half, they scored 21 in the second half to defeat Kentucky. 21 points in the second half was the good news. The bad news was zero points in the first half. They need to pray that uh, South Carolina finds some miracles in the season. And the team that got knocked out of the top 10 this week was Wisconsin, and they're now at 6-1. and one, But they can still cause some havoc uh, in the Big Ten and in the playoff uh, championships. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some special Arkansas grind. And I think in Arkansas, we need us a new grinder. Uh, this is a bit of a repeat, talking about Auburn beating Arkansas 51-10. to I think Chad will get one more year. If he can reach 500 in 2020, he'll get a fourth year. Now, no one really expected Arkansas to beat Auburn, but they certainly should have played better. That fake punt that they tried was reminiscent of the fake fair catch from last year. You remember that? That FCS team that did a fake fair catch and nobody tackled him and then he just took off and scored a touchdown? That wasn't pretty. Anyway, it's going to be a long second half of the season. I'm going to be there this weekend and at least I'll have good fellowship and food in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I don't expect to win. Louisiana uh, beat Arkansas State 37-20. to A State seems to be struggling with their defense. They must win three of the next five to make a bowl game. Now, the good news is the remaining oppo opponents, I don't think any of them has a winning schedule. So they should be able to get those three wins and get to, get to a bowl game this season. They host Texas State this week. How about some undefeated sweeteners here? Baylor is 7-0, and and they're quietly making waves for the Big 12 opponents. SMU is 7-0. and I bet Chad Morris wishes he was still there, but, of course, they're not a power conference. Minnesota is 7-0. and Wow. We'll see if they are for real soon enough. Appalachian State, 6-0. and Nice job. Again, not a power conference. And, by the way, Boise State was undefeated, but they dropped out of the unbeaten ranks when BYU poured salt on their coffee 
by beating them with a field goal, 28 to 25. Now here are some notable mix-ins. Oregon and Washington played, and that was a heck of a game. But Oregon held on to the win, 35 to 31. Now Oregon is the only Pac-12 team with a chance at the playoffs. And that's only if they went out and Auburn wins out can the Ducks contend because Auburn's the only team that has defeated the Ducks. What about Les Miles? He almost pulled out a mad hatter on us. He had t had Kansas so close. With a minute left, he went for a two-point conversion for the win. At least we thought he was going for the win. But then Kansas had enough time to get, I mean, uh, Kansas couldn't stop them. And so Texas had enough time to get the ball down the field close enough to score a field goal, and they ended up taking the game 50-48. to 48. But anyway, kudos to Les for giving the Longhorns such a big scare. Vandy got a badly needed win over Mizzou, so that hurts Mizzou's shot at the SEC East, but it does save Coach Mason's job for now. Uh, tomorrow's another day. And then Jimbo got a needed SEC victory over Ole Miss, 24-17. to The jury's still out on Matt Luke. I think Mark and John are fine. Uh, you biblical scholars will get that one. Anyway, how about some rotten java beans? It only takes one to, to you know, mess up the, the train here, as we say. So Auburn... Michigan, Baylor, Minnesota, Texas, Wake Forest, Iowa, South Carolina, K-State, or any Pac-12 team could burst someone's bubble. So these are the guys that I'm picking to burst bubbles as we go through the rest of the season here. And then more to come, or should I say mocha to come. A couple of tasty treats to come this weekend is the Wisconsin-Ohio State game and the Auburn-LSU game. Both of those games should be pretty nice. Now, a couple of games where the milk may sour on the favored team, maybe the Notre Dame-Michigan. Notre Dame should be favored in that game, but you never know what Michigan's going to throw at you. And even though I'd love to see Jalen uh, in the playoffs, I worry about them facing K-State this week. So... I'm hoping Oklahoma can take it, but with K-State, you just never know what you'll get there. The last straw. I have LSU and Bama tied at number one. So they're tied at number one. And it doesn't matter anyway till they play. So don't we're not even going to argue about that. I've got Ohio State at three. And then I'm going to let Clemson, OU, and Penn State draw straws for four, five, and six for now. And then they, they're followed by several SEC teams. And then let the Irish coffee come in at 10. So that would be Notre Dame if you didn't figure that out. But anyway, my final words are, your guess is as good as mine. And as they say, it's all in the grind. Have a great week, and I hope your team wins this coming weekend. Good day.